It's been a while and I thought I would bring you guys some fresh content. A lot has actually happened in my life and I know you guys haven't seen me in quite some time. I have been really inconsistent in terms of posting videos on the channel, but I thought now that we've crossed to 13,000 subscribers, I would actually make this video for each and every one of you guys. And it's actually a story that I've been wanting to tell you guys and a video that I've been wanting to do. So here's a video on choosing specialities and my overall journey during internship. Grab a piece of paper and let's go. Hello and welcome to Hospital Survival Guide. My name is Dr. Moses Kazebu. This is a series on my YouTube channel where we look at hospital related topics, hospital related content, and pretty much how to survive the rotation. Be it you may be a medical student that's just about to start rotations, or you may be a junior resident medical officer that just completed your internship, or you may be a freshly graduated student that's just about to start your junior residency. So as most of you already know, I hadn't yet completed my internship because of many various reasons. And this is a story that I actually wanted to tell you guys on the channel because it, my internship was delayed by quite a bit. You know, when we graduated and went into the field as we were writing the final exam, that was when we had COVID coming into the world and that's when COVID-19 actually peaked. and. During that period, we finished internship and I mean, we finished medical school and went into internship and we were employed under the COVID contracts. So I spent most of the times there, and I think I've told you guys the story, spent most of the times there. I think I spent about six months of my time or even more of that in the COVID department. So it means that my internship was already delayed by six months. So you can already imagine I should have been done with the internship six months way back. And not only that, there were some compounding factors because when the contracts had finished, the, I had some challenges here and there, so I couldn't still continue with uh, going to the internship site where I was doing my internship or my junior residency. But now that I finally finished and finally I'm going to be signed out from the department where I am, I actually thought that it's quite important that I should give you guys this video on pretty much how to survive this thing that we call internship and uh, what next for you guys and which rotations to look out for, what are the important tips I can give you from each of the rotations given that I've now rotated in all the four major departments, be it internal medicine, pediatrics, obstetrics and gynecology, pediatrics, did I say pediatrics again? Surgery. I don't know why. Maybe it's a sign from the Holy Ghost that maybe I'm supposed to get into pediatrics. So as you already know, once you finish your seven years of medical school, seven years is long, guys. But now I think medicine is now six years. So once you finish your six years of medical school, then you are, of course, going to graduate and then you're going to write your HBCZ licensure exam because we do have those. And so once you graduate and you write your HPCZ examinations and you pass those, then you become a junior resident medical officer. If you're employed, well and good for you. If you're not and you're offering your services for free, then that's also fine. So once you actually get employed and or you're offering your services for free, you start your rotations, then you're going to be rotating in four predominant departments. Now I think the rules and regulations are going to be changing because internship is now being reduced to one year. So it means that the core competencies of each and every single course has have to be learned very quickly, especially for the surgical rotations because truth be told, if you're not competent, if you don't do, let's say, a specific number of C-sections uh, in your rotation, you won't be allowed to proceed to the next rotation. For example, if you don't see a specific number of patients on the wards, you, the, the consultant doesn't feel that you've learned the specific information that you're supposed to learn then you won't be released from that and you tend to spend much longer time in the department so as you already know 
each rotation I think will be three months now with this new one year internship thing that has been introduced. So surgery will be three months, obstetrics and gynecology will be three months. I have no idea how that's going to work out. Uh, pediatrics is going to be three months. Internal medicine is going to be three months. For someone who's actually branching into the medicine thingies, the medicine departments, which I think is where you should go because mm, it's bouquet this side, I'm telling you, it's wild. This side, the surgical side, it's wild. But anyways, I'll come to that. So if someone is um, wanting to go into medical departments like pediatrics and uh, internal medicine, then it won't, it won't be much of a disadvantage for them. It will be a disadvantage for those that are planning on going into surgical rotations, especially things like obstetrics and gynecology, especially things like uh, surgery. That's where it's going to be a bit of an issue. So overall ratings for all the four courses. Busiest course, which, which was the busiest, I mean busiest rotation, which was the busiest rotation. Obs and guide, guys. <laughs> Obs and guide, oh my goodness. Obs and guide is just, it, it's something else. Like, I think I did a video on how I survived my obstetrics part. I haven't done one of how I su survived my gynecological one. Yo, I have some stories to tell you guys. So if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel up to this point and you're still watching the video up to this point, clearly you love the content. Why don't you go ahead and hit the subscribe button? Drop a comment in the comment section below so that you don't miss up on such amazing content every time I post. And of course, show some likes, share the content with other people that you think may benefit from such amazing content. So with obstetrics and gynecology, that was like the busiest rotation of all four rotations. I think it, for, for me personally, it was even busier than internal medicine. It was even busier than surgery. It was even way much busier than pediatrics, especially the obstetrics components. In terms of gyne, the flow of patients, uh, I think, depends on the time of day. Early in the morning, or if you have weekend calls, they tend to flock a lot because most people that come in with gynecological issues tend to, some of them tend to wait for a bit until things like get really, really bad. I don't know why people have that mentality. So busiest rotation, definitely obstetrics and gynecology. Easiest rotation out of the four, <laughs> was there an easiest rotation? Yes, I think pediatrics was the easiest rotation. Uh, according to my opinion. Easiest rotation to do is pediatrics. I think pediatrics, if you do the bare minimum, you can actually go by. The only thing that I didn't like about pediatrics was the fact that I was sick most of the rotation. I got these nasty flus from these children, but otherwise it was quite an enjoyable rotation. My best rotation or most enjoyable rotation, I think is a tie between actually pediatrics and internal medicine and i'm actually even debating on whether i should go for pediatrics or whether i should go for internal medicine maybe you guys can help me out and actually comment where you think i should end up where I, whether i should go into pediatrics or whether i should go into internal medicine hell maybe i should even go into obstetrics and gynecology it seems like everyone seems to try to convince me into getting into obstetrics and gynecology so with um pediatrics it was the easiest rotation out of the four rotations. Then most challenging rotation, which this one is a bit tough. I think pediatrics is definitely not going to be the most challenging. So it's already out of the list. The so most challenging rotation, I would say, what was the most challenging? I think obstetrics and gynecology was the most challenging. And let me explain. Let me explain why it was the most challenging. Out of all the rotations I've actually had, usually I have these anxiety issues. When I'm getting to a new rotation, you're getting to meet new people, you're getting to meet new conditions, you have to acclimatize yourself to whatever is going on. So I got to Ops and Gain, and I, I genuinely didn't like it as a student, and I genuinely still don't like it as, as an adult or as a, as a worker there. But uh, I'm getting to love it a bit. I think the people that I worked with uh, gave me a very amazing time. And I realized that the department is actually not as bad as it is. So day one on the ward, like day one, I looked so miserable. And one of my colleagues actually laughed at me. And that was because I, was, I started off in obstetrics. And it's like if you start off or with other departments, and you're in other departments and you get to obstetrics you kind of feel like as if it's a you're being punished like as if it's a punishment why do i say so because 
we would often spend so much time with small number of patients you know obstetrics you can see like maybe 23 patients in a day have like maybe 20 deliveries and those patients will keep you busy rest assured they'll keep you busy you can have one particular patient at a go and this patient will keep you extremely busy now what made this a bit challenging is the fact that there's very room for mistake that you can actually make in obstetrics because mistakes will cause a disaster for you. You make a mistake, the baby dies. You make a mistake worse of the mother and the baby dies, which is even bad. And you know, there's this blame game that's all going on. So there's very little room for mistakes. So you kind of feel like you're always under pressure. And if you have seniors that are very helpful, we had seniors that were very helpful. Of course, I'm not going to mention any names on this particular video, but we had seniors that were quite very helpful. So if you have seniors that are helpful, it makes the rotation actually much, much easier than actually having a senior that's not so helpful. So with obstetrics, again, there was a point where I was working alone. Yo, can you imagine? I was working alone, especially in gynecology. Towards the end, I was doing calls alone. And you know how gyne sometimes can get. You may sometimes get like two emergencies at once. You get a woman that has a suspected ectopic pregnancy coming in, or you get a woman that is bleeding coming in. And I almost even got into an argument. I actually did get into an argument with a patient and we actually even ended up exchanging words, but I chose the higher road because we, we swore an oath, didn't we? I think we did. We, we did swear an oath. Yeah, we did swear an oath. And of course, according to code of ethics, I'm not supposed to argue with patients and the patient is supposed to be right all the time well anyways so uh, i was doing calls alone so this became a bit hectic and g the nature of gyne is actually quite different to obstetrics gyne i think is more or less a medicine related type of department with a few surgical procedures here and there but most of the things are, are side theater um, medicine related in gynecology of course i got to learn a lot of skills i did my first cesarean section did quite a, a number of the cesarean sections so i was quite nervous because generally my hands are not steady i have these jittery hands so i was quite anxious that I'm, am i going to be um shaking when i'm doing this procedure am i going is it going to be visible am i going to take two hours am i going to get take three hours such that i'm going to be put under pressure by the nurses the anesthesia team and of course i did my first cesarean section it was pretty amazing actually the the nurse actually was even surprised i was like have you done this before and I'm like nah nah i haven't this is my first time that i'm doing this and this is actually a woman that was uh, one previous caesar so this gave me a bit of some confidence and it's actually a department that is actually weirdly satisfying out of the four departments obstetrics and gynecology is like weirdly the most satisfying department of all and followed by surgery there's a bit of some satisfaction in internal medicine and pediatrics but as compared to the surgical rotations i think the surgical rotations give you much more satisfaction because a patient comes in you offer them treatment there and then and they go away and that's it so it's like you have patients that come in and you solve their problems but with internal medicine and pediatrics you give them some medication you keep them for on the ward for like two months and then that's when you're trying to see the effects of the patients um, based on the treatment and all but looking at job satisfaction i think obstetrics and surgery have better job satisfaction as compared to the uh, medical departments so i can say the most satisfying of the four surprisingly when i started off my internship i never thought that ops and gain if you asked me this question and i i you tell me that in future you're going to say that ops and gain is the most satisfying of the four i would say that you're actually lying to me but the truth be told ops and gain is actually the most satisfying of the four rotations the least satisfying i think most most of them have their perks and challenges least satisfying maybe pediatrics I don't know maybe pediatrics it's been a while since i was there and i think i do enjoy most of the time like i told you because i was sick there so but it was an okay department so if you're actually aiming to see um or before I actually get it to that point the most tiring department definitely ops and gain takes the crown like it takes the crown in terms of surgery was the easiest to master 
and it was the easiest to get a hold of. I think surgery was the easiest to get accustomed to very quickly. Like in a short space of time, you can see almost everything and you'll be able to recognize these emergencies here and there. You'll be able to do certain procedures here and there. So I think it has the least steep learning curve. In terms of pediatrics, you may have a bit of some challenges here, learning dosages of certain drugs and how certain drugs are given, calculations of fluids, all those things. So my overall comments on in terms of the four particular rotations and how to survive these four rotations, I'll begin with obstetrics and gynecology because that's what I'm finishing with. So obstetrics and gynecology, you will constantly be under pressure, so you must make sure that you always eat before you go to the ward. You have to have a mind that remembers many small details because you have to keep reassessing women at a specific time. So if you miss those reassessments, you mess up everything. You should have, of course, some surgical skills. So this is a rotation that I would want would have loved to actually have as a second or third rotation but if you have it as your last rotation that's even better because you would have learned the surgical skills from surgery so which is important to rotate in surgery before going to obstetrics and gynecology and it's important to rotate in pediatrics before going to obstetrics and gynecology it gives you a much better appreci appreciation of the subject in terms of the tiredness you always be tired there will always be work, uh, you hardly ever sleep on a call, you hardly ever rest. And so biggest advice that I was told is that whenever you get the chance to sleep and rest during your whole day, sleep and rest because you never know what happens. So that's with obstetrics and gynecology. So if you're someone who really loves the adrenaline, you love being involved in certain things, obstetrics and gynecology is for you. If you're someone who likes the boring life, quiet, you just want to be treating coughs and diarrheas, go for pediatrics you enjoy that so that's with obstetrics and gynecology then surgery was also weirdly satisfying so in terms of action as well as adrenaline surgery is uh, the way to go but it doesn't have much adrenaline as compared to obstetrics and gynecology so it'll have a bit of some adrenaline but not so much in terms of where you should actually start off surgery is a nice place to actually start off because it has the least uh, steepest learning curve. Of course, you have different departments like ortho, uro, and general surgery, but it's as well as the pediatric uh, surgery. But it's a, a department where it's uh, a bit easier for you to get a hold of whatever is going on in the department. Then, in terms of pediatrics, the biggest thing that I can just tell you is learn how to cannulate babies, learn the dosages of the drugs, and of course, there are a lot of intricate details, so you should be able to pay attention to close details. So if you're a person that has a good eye for details, then pediatrics is where you should go and pediatrics is where you should be. If you have a love for children, you're able to relate with children, you're able to relate with babies, it's the best place to be. The only biggest challenge that you'd ever have in pediatrics is in terms of dealing with death and dealing with grief. That's where now you may have a bit of a challenge. In terms of the last one, I saved the best for last, which is internal medicine. Yes, it is the best. I know there are some people that say, oh, no, it's not. Internal medicine, just walking around thinking, it could be this, it could be SLE, it could be that, but then you're not doing anything for the patient. Oh, well. There are some people that love the challenge. There are some people that love to think, unlike other departments where they're just cutting, cutting, cutting. You don't even know what they're cutting. You don't even know why they're cutting. They just cut. Anyways, a good surgeon is the one that knows when not to cut. So in terms of IMED, it's, in terms of met, mental challenge, it'll give you a good mental challenge and it gives you time to think, it gives you time to read a lot of things and you just have to constantly be reading. So if you're someone who really loves books, you like to be involved or absorbed in looking at textbooks, reading the latest things, IMED is where you should actually go. That's where you can actually flex your muscles and walk into the room and be respected because you'll most likely be the smartest person in the room. Let's, let's be frank, guys. So those are my overall remarks on internship and choosing speciality. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'd like to thank each and every one of you for helping the channel reach 13,000 subscribers. If you haven't yet subscribed, what are you waiting for? Until next time, my name is Dr. Moses Kazevu. Bye-bye.